Greetings YouTube, time for a long overdue bargain video. I should have done this two weeks ago, but things just got busy and it didn't happen. Um, so we're gonna start out with books. We have the GURPS Basic Set 4th Edition and the GURPS Basic Set 4th Edition Powers Book. Um, and I picked these two up for 20 bucks at a flea market. Funnily enough, the day before this, Someone replied to a six-year-old video to ask if I'd ever read 4th edition, if I'd ever got around to reading it, and I hadn't. Um, and then the next day I stumble upon this. So maybe I'll someday get around to reading this, but there you go. So, And he was specifically asking about this superpowers. Even more weird. Life's like that sometimes. Then we have Ships of uh, the Starfleet Volume 1 Revised. And these are all things about Star Trek ships, schematics, and things like that. And at the back of the book, all these little foldy pages are all fold out maps of a particular sheep ship, the Belk Nap. Um, this was, I don't know if this was officially sanctioned or fan based. It was originally done in 1989, and this is a reprint in 91, I think. So, nobody knows anything about this. I actually haven't looked this one up. Um, I picked it up for five bucks. It was still sealed in plastic, and it was one of the selling points the guy had. I opened it. I don't. Can I, I'm not going to keep it sealed in plastic forever. I just want to look at it. Um, now we have a Star Trek where no one has gone before. A history in pictures. Uh, texts and an introduction by William Shatner. Uh, and it was a buck. Um, and inside this book is something I don't think that the people at Goodwill realized they had. Which is an actual autographed copy of a picture of Nana Visitor. The actress that plays this character. Also there was a Star Trek classic picture in here that someone used to have pinned to their, their bulletin board or something like that. Um, but the book itself has a pictorial um, take of all kinds of the different editions, uh, you know, versions of Star Trek, each of the series. They even, uh, yeah, they even do the animated series. I need to get my hands on that. It, it wasn't very good, but uh, I gotta own that someday, you know? Um, and I bought it specifically because I'll probably just get a video out of it. I'll talk about it and show the, sorry, show the contents a little bit. Um, and I'll probably just give this to somebody because I have no real need for a, this picture. Though I did a quick search and it's worth about 25 bucks. So they didn't know it was in there, I don't think. Otherwise, they wouldn't have sold this for a dollar. But it's still a $45 book and it's in really nice shape. So who knows? But I'll get a video out of it. Now we have a... The Firescape, the illustrated companion. I love kind of non-fiction references to science fiction and fantasy worlds. I picked that up, I think, for two bucks. Then we have Soldiers and Ghosts, a history of battles in classical uh, antiquity. I paid more for this than I really wanted to, five bucks, but by gosh and by golly, it's an illustrated book about battles in antiquity. How could I not read that? Then we have um, Brunel Esch Eschy's Dome, which is a Nonfiction book about a particular dome that was built um, in the Middle Ages. Then we have three volumes of the Knights of Did the Dare Table, Tales from, from the Vault, volumes one, two, and three. And I got this Flash Blood Will Run, and I got all four of these books for five bucks at a flea market. And then we have a, a, uh, a Deathlock comic, which I think I picked up for a dollar because uh, I love Deathlock, and that, that front cover was just so wonderfully cheesy. So, on to uh, dis uh, movies, and it's gonna be a bunch. We have Phineas and Ferb, the movie. That was something my wife was interested in. Kronk's New Groove, which apparently has the entire original voice cast. I didn't even know this movie existed, so I picked that up for a buck. One of my favorite dealers at the Hollis, New Hampshire flea market is moving to South Carolina, and he deals in DVDs and Blu-rays. And he is selling off his entire stock, all of the DVDs, for a uh, dollar a piece. So in the last three weeks, uh, up to the point of this filming, I picked up 20 discs plus uh, a TV season and I think one Blu-ray from him. Plus some of the other stuff in here I've found. So I found a bunch of stuff and I'm probably going to find more stuff. He's getting rid of everything. So I'm going to go back again, probably not the day of, not the third, probably the tenth. Um, and see if I can find some more stuff. Then we have Patton, A King of the Corner. Uh, Kite, this looks kind of interesting, but it's a film that my wife has probably got no interest in because she's kind of 
been moving away from violence, and this is supposed to be very violent. So I'll probably watch that by myself, as well as Daniel Craig's in uh, Renaissance, which is a an animated film. She would probably have no interest in that either. Then we have a four-movie Richard Pryor collection, um, Which Way is Up, Brewster's Millions, Car Wash, and Bustin' Loose. Got that for a buck. Detroit Rock City, uh, Cloudy with with a chance of meatballs too. I thought the first one was cute and silly, so we'll see how this one is. I paid five bucks for that one. We have Silverhawk, which is an Asian superhero film about a hero I have never heard of before. Bought that one blind. Bought a, bought a lot of these blind. Uh, King Arthur's Britain, which is a documentary. Mermaid, from the same folks that did Kung Fu Hustle. It's about a mermaid assassin. Sells itself. Tora, 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 and I got both Patton and this one for the commentary track because I've seen both these films before. Uh, Anna Music. These are electronic animated videos, music videos, and I picked it up because it's a commentary track. And for a buck, I got to know what this what this guy has to say about the the uh, music videos that he did. The Flash Gordon uh, animated series, the one where he has that sidekick is a lion because you know, when you're doing animation it's easy to have people not just be a man in suit they can be a little more freaky um any murphy and owen smith in well rather owen wilson in i spy the art of the steel which is a kurt russell film i never heard of that one bought that one blind as well uh the sabata trilogy don't know much about this one so we have sabata adios sabata and return of sabata they're westerns uh lee van cleef and Ewell brinner uh, Cowboy Bebop, the movie, something I've never actually seen. Uh, Vertigo Special Edition, which I got for a buck. Um, and I got that for the commentary track. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Uh, Boyhood, my wife wants to see that one. Shanghai Noon and Rock Hudson. And this has, has anybody seen my gal? A very special favor, The Golden Blade, The Last Sunset, and The Spiral Road, um, which is whack. Two and a half hours long? Holy crud. Um, but Rock Hudson is an incredibly good actor, so I picked that up, again, for like a dollar. On to more movies. We have The Medallion, Jackie Chan. I picked that up for two bucks at Goodwill. We have G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, which is really silly. Um, Star Trek Beyond, and I can't decide if I like this more or less than the second one. But it definitely falls below the first one. Uh, I haven't done a review on either of the of this one yet. I think I've already done a review on the second one. It hasn't just gone live yet. We have John, John Wayne North to Alaska, which I'll watch and probably give it to my father. We have a uh, Doctor Who, the complete second series. Um, I just picked that up for the commentary track, mostly. Another version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Apparently, I'm collecting them. Swiss Family Robinson. I got that for the commentary. Uh, baseball's Greatest Legends. It's still sealed. I got that for my father. Uh, X, the man with the X-ray eyes. I can remember this. I didn't realize, but Don Rickles is in this, and this has a commentary track by Roger Corman, and I got it for a buck. Awesome. Um, then we have the Super Friends, the first season, uh, and Flash, which I picked up for $5, and that, that guy who's having is that sale I mentioned. Five bucks, and it's still sealed, never opened. I don't know who originally paid $48 for this or where that was. How do you, Canada? They got ripped off on that one, folks. And then we have a crystal globe, which is just so pretty. It's just so pretty. Uh, and that's a, that's a magnifying lens I'm just using as a stand. It works really well. We have some plastic gems, which I picked up as, you know, concept of, you know, props, things like that. My wife's like, look at this, and handed it to me. Like, you know, this attracts me. She said, yep, that's why I handed it to you. Um, we have some opera glasses, which my wife picked up for a song at a yard at an, a yard sale. They need a little work. The, the coating needs to be replaced. But my wife, they work. They lock in place. They, they all the mechanisms function. And she was willing to take it on as a little craft project because she really liked the size and, and, and the way they functioned. Um, and it was like a dollar or something like that. Um, then we have some action figures. Now, these guys were something I saw online ages ago. And I got these for four bucks a piece. Uh, this is a, a Panther and this is a, a Smilodon. Um, and no accessories. These are just the figures themselves. But they're really heavy, solid, well-built, lots of articulation. 
Um, and I can't remember who made these because the feet aren't telling me anything. So if anybody knows who made these, that would be awesome because these things are really cool. Uh, we have a handmade ceramic Thunderbird. It's a little damaged, um, but I don't care. It was just so cool. It's, it is handmade ceramic, really well glazed, and it's portly. Who doesn't want a portly Thunderbird in their life? Then we have Batman with one of his grapple with his grapple gun from the Dark Knight, the original Dark Knight. Um, and I really like this figure, and I picked that up at a flea market for a buck. My wife got herself a voodoo doll. I don't know why she did. Then we have a vintage can opener. I really like the look of it, and I wanted to give it a try and see how well it functions. Uh, I picked that up at a flea market. Uh, we have... have Giant 12-sided dice, my favorite shaped dice. I picked it up for four bucks for four giant dice. That made me smile. I picked up these two, which are um, tens, so 10 to 90, and then uh, 10 to 10 to 100, 10 to 90. Okay, 10 to 10 to 10 to 90, and then hundreds. I thought was kind of cool. And the guy packaged them so, them so nicely. It made me smile. We have a unicorn bottle opener. It's really heavy. Great. We make a great... Uh, I haven't tried it as a bottle opener. We make a great key fob because you can make you do strikes like that or like that with this thing. But it's a key fob, officer. Um, we have an octopus, which my wife wanted because she loves octopus. And this is a really good quality figure. Uh, review coming on all of these eventually. We have three bells. Um, this one, we, we like the shape. Not a bad sound. This one, we also like the shape. They had this nice handle. Really like the sound of that one. Oddly, I found one exactly like it the next day. Weird. And this one, my wife's friend, or our friend Felicia gave my wife. Nice little tinkly sound. Um, then, we have some, then we have some oddities here. This is a cow. Who stares into your soul with demon eyes. We have a flashlight here, which you can do it temp to squeeze in, or you pull it off the base and it goes on. Weird. No markings on it. No idea where that came from. This is a Camillus Cub Scout knife, US made. I picked it up for three bucks. I think it's probably worth way more than three bucks. It's in very nice condition. And I think this is from 1980 or 84. Four, I'm not positive. Anybody knows more about this, tell me. It has a nice heft to it. And it's got these kind of blue scales, which I liked. Um, I think that's everything. I don't think I forgot anything on this table. Okay, on to more things. Like I said, overdue video. Here we have a couple of C-clamps and some nice chain. I picked this up at a, an estate sale. This master lock is attached. I got no key. Now I've heard that getting master locks off things is pretty easy. So I may go on to YouTube and see if I can find out how to get one of those off without having to cut it. Maybe there's a simple solution. We'll find out. I got no use for it. I may use it as an impact weapon. But the chain is in really nice shape and a good quality chain is expensive and I paid about a buck for that. Then we have this large a box. I paid five dollars for this. It has a nice tray inside. It's supposed to be waterproof. I don't know sure if it is, but it's a nice shape. It locks. It locks securely. It has a nice handle. Sorry, doing this one-handed. Locks like this. Got a nice handle. And I'm just going to use it for knife storage, things like that. I need to clean it up a little. It's all on the dusty side. And then we have this lantern, which I thought was quite cute. I picked that up at Target on sale. Um, it's from their no name house brand um but i thought it was quite adorable and i mean i'll find a place to put that thing it's got a, it's got plastic light so it's not i mean the plastic so it's not in danger um so it might be useful it's just four double a's which is are ubiquitous and easy to find and obviously it's tunable a church key because my wife didn't have one a small pry bar which needs to be sharpened up a bit i got that from my mother-in-law because she doesn't have one um, we have this, which is the Angleizer. I've been thinking about picking up one of these for about three years now, and I just never did it. Then I found this at a flea market for four bucks. Comes with a CD to help you figure things out, like a, a, a program for figuring out angles and such. For four dollars, can't go wrong. A couple of trailer hitches. This is a fairly standard size one, and this one is a monster thing. I'm going to see if I can find some pipe fittings that I can turn this into a mace. Maybe the same one, like one on one on either end. Um, 
But the funny thing is I paid three bucks for this and I paid about a dollar for this. It all depends on where you are and what you find. And speaking of that, this is an awesome piece of chain. I don't know what it's originally for. This handle is really, really comfortable. I paid about a dollar fifty for this thing at a, at a, at a yard sale. Um, but it's rated to 23 thousand pounds i was thinking of me i'm not going to touch this i don't want to cut this at all but i'm thinking of attaching maybe a spiked ball to this thing it makes some really nasty weapon but just by itself this thing would hit like a truck then we have a number 57 car um uh carborundum brand sharpening stone and how could i not buy something that says 57 on it not to mention it's in nice shape um and uh, I'm going to look it up, see what they specify it for. I think it might be useful for a number of gardening implements and things like that. It's got a nice handle on it. And it's in, the, and it's, and it's in nice condition. I, again, I paid about a dollar, a dollar a quarter for that. Um, then we have this uh, Lux Pro. And I don't think I own a Lux Pro. And what's interesting about this is that you can slide this lens in and out like that and to go from flood to spot. So that might have some applications. Then we have this really nice rock hammer. I just really love the feeling, the weight, the patina on it. I have a vibe for tools, what can I say? And speaking of a vibe for tools, we have a dog bone. And this is a German dog bone. I showed it to a friend of mine. My friend Felicia's like, if you find another one, get it, picked it up. I wish I'd known that because the guy had two of them. I would have bet both of them. Um, but I, 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 I like dog bones. And, and again, a German brand dog bone. Um, for five dollars is nothing i can't pass up on then we have this funky tree type hook which i got from my wife though i'm probably going to find better screws maybe so they blend in a little better to this because uh, that's the bright silver and this is black i have some dark colored screws i think will work better but again put it outside for the hang plants and things off of it and it's just got a nice vibe to it and i paid three dollars for that then we have this and this is some kind of tool head and i'm not sure that the steel shaft it goes all the way so this is a got steel a steel lining goes all the way through it i, I paid two bucks for it I didn't pay three and i can't figure out what it is because it was never used to hit anything with was it a roller i'm not positive i'm going to turn it into a mace head i'm never going to hit anything with it because it's quite pretty but i'm just going to make a make an impact weapon out of it um then we have some hooks and things, which I picked up for, again, for a song at a, an estate sale. Because you can never have too many hooks and things. Especially when you're me. And we have this, which I picked up for a dollar. And I don't actually need this big pan. or not bacon, but this, this pan here. I picked it up for this. My wife got a, a kit recently, and it has a plastic cup. I don't like the plastic cup. And now she doesn't have a plastic cup. Now she has a metal cup. And I'll ask her if she wants to do anything with the pan. If she doesn't want to do anything with the pan, I may just donate it again. Someone else can buy it for a dollar. We have a book light. This thing bends, so it slips onto a book, or you can stand up, right? Or, and you can, and it's USB charging. And you just go... Oh, sorry. Oh, I just lit it. There we go. You gotta kind of hit it just right. There you go. Um, it's quite bright. Um, and I picked it up for, I right, think, 10 bucks for sale at, at Barnes & Noble. Then we had this weird clamp. I picked it up for a dollar. I'm like, what does this thing do? And it says, five-minute vulcanizer. And it's for using on vulcanized inner tubes, which is just wild. I'm going to clean it up. It's got some heavy rust on it. I bought some vinegar today, so I could soak that in a little vinegar and see if I can get the rust off there. Um... And we have a straight razor. My father gave this to me as a birthday gift, along with some money. He always gives me the same number of dollars as I am alive, because his mother started that habit when I was a kid, and he kept it up. So I got $53 today and a straight razor and a vintage box. The box alone might be worth something to somebody, but I think this could be ivory. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but it's pretty cool looking. And it's not in bad shape for the for a, for a vintage. I don't know if it's an antique. Could be an antique, but but at least a vintage straight razor. Um, and yet we have more things to come. Sorry, folks. Again, overdue video. Here we have a Carhartt work vest. Got a fuzzy lining. It's got pocket a pocket in the inside. And I picked this up at a yard sale for two bucks. So Carhartt vest for two dollars. That's pretty good. We have a wind chime. My wife wanted. <laughs> My neighbors are going to love us. I need to mount that on the porch for her. Um, she picked that up for $5 at a flea market. Here we have a Dremel Trio, a tool I'd never heard of. Apparently, it's their version of a spiral cutting saw. And it's got guides here. 
um, for doing cuts. It has grinding tips as well as a spiral cutting tips. Um, and the person that bought it apparently thought that they were buying a standard Dremel tool, and it isn't a standard Dremel tool. So I had no idea what it did. So it's like new. Almost all the pieces are here, as best I can tell. It works. I checked it before I bought it, and I paid all of $5 for this. So I'm like, for $5 for a Dremel tool that I have never seen before, I'll give it a try to see how it works. Now, it works at both right angles, and you push both of these, and you can turn it to go straight cuts. So it gives you multiple functions. Um, that's a piece of email. Now, this is a flat bat. So it's pretty much the almost the standard width of a baseball bat, a little bit wider, but much thinner. And I think it's for some specific kind of sporting thing. They get, because it's lighter, you can swing it faster. I'm not sure why you have these things. Somebody out there knows what a flat bat's used for. Tell me, because I don't. I just know what it's called. It's got a notch here, which I think is to help you figure out which direction you have the, the, the thing pointed. Now, why did I buy this? Well, this isn't quite a Polynesian patu, and it isn't quite a Polynesian war paddle. By, by gosh and by golly, this thing is a war club. Now, this is a light war club, but it is a war club, and it's a nice shape. I picked it up for seven bucks at a flea market. Now, we have here is a walking stick or cane, and it's an aluminum shaft with aluminum tip and aluminum handle, and this handle closes up this way to carry, but it opens up this way as a seat. So you stick the spike in the ground, and you sit your bum on there to rest. It's really quite cool. This is from England. It is called the Feather Weight, and feather is spelled normally, and weight is a W A T E. Um, I don't know exactly how much this costs. I said I saw a number of ranges, but some of them, most of them fluctuate in the forty dollar range for this, and I paid five bucks for it. It's got a really nice weight, nice feel to it. It's very comfortable in the hand, and it would make a great thrusting uh, tool weapon against uh, animals or even a human assailant if you had to, but great in case you find an aggressive dog on a trail or something, um, which does happen. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool find. I can't wait to try it out. I really can't get it. Wait. Yeah, forget it. Um, so I got one more thing to show you, and then we're done. Okay, apparently I lied. I have two things. This is a monitor arm that you mount onto a wall that lets you then have a monitor floating so there's nothing under it. And I got this at a yard sale for nothing. It was in a free pile. And I'm thinking of setting it up on my desk because I have a small folding table here, which I regularly use as an out table to hold books and my mouse when I'm pedaling and things like that. And it, it's always in the way because it's a folding table. So I'm thinking, if I, I think I can mount this, putting these two holes above the strip for my keyboard tray and this one below my keyboard tray and then mounting some wood inside the desk so that there I'm not actually grabbing onto the fiber board because it's just a press board desk but I'm going through it to a larger object on the other side and I should be able to then use the tray to hold things because if it'll handle a monitor it'll handle a few things I put on it um, because I don't put a lot of weight on it at all, really. And this thing rotates this way, and it's got a nice cover, so once it's mounted, you cover it up so you can't see this fixture, and it rotates this way. And for nothing, um, that's a good deal. And I actually considered buying one of these at, at a flea market, but then I stumbled upon this at a yard sale for nothing. So for the, out for the effort of drilling three holes and finding some stuff to go on the inside, I think I may have a solution. I will probably use lag bolts to get going to a wooden blocks because that will be the easiest and fastest process, I think. Um, and then just rip, 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 some, you know, uh, with a screw in with a socket set and you're all done. So that should not be difficult to pull off at all. So just three holes, two and one there, and then we should be good to go. And again, and the, and the track for the tray would run here on the inside. So it should not interfere with anything if I'm lucky. I just need to find some scrap wood kicking around. I think I should have some in the basement. But remember that flat bat I showed you, which is a light war club? This, folks, this is a heavy war club. This is a cricket bat. 
Now I've been looking for a cricket bat for five years. Now I could buy one online anytime I wanted to, but that's not what I do for a hobby. My hobby is to hunt for things, to find things. And I got this at a thrift shop for $10. It is a Maestro Select from Gun and More. I don't think they make this model anymore. I'm not sure how much it costs, but again, it's probably way more than 10 bucks. Someone has put a little reinforcing tape down here on the strike surface. I don't know if that matters. I've never played cricket in my life, and I'm never going to. And they covered this with duct tape, which is a little ugly. I may take that off. I may not. Um, I'm not modifying this at all. It's, I, I, it's too beautiful. I love this thing. And if I ever find another one, so I have two of them, I will probably modify the second one because this first one is going to be my baby. I'm going to keep this right in my office where I can look at it all the time because I'm so happy I found this. I've been wanting one of these for years. And here it is. It's all mine. Sean is not the only person that owns a cricket bat. Anyone get that reference? So I hope you have enjoyed this incredibly long overdue bargain video. It's been fun making. I've loved the hunt. But frankly, it's time for me to stop because my voice is giving out. Love you!